Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Now today is a big day, because we're going to talk about the first issue in the new era of X-Men comics in issue number one of the Air of Apocalypse, written by Steve Fox. But before we dive into the story, I want to ask you a favor. If you enjoy this video, please leave a like and a comment to help the channel grow. Now just to provide some little context about what led up to this point, Apocalypse is currently feeling some type of way about the direction New Krakoa is heading. For those mutants in the White Hot Room abandoned the idea of the survival of the fittest and now believe in the survival of the best fit. So with that revelation falling upon him, he now believes that his era is over so he is looking for someone to replace him and try to succeed where he had failed. Now, this era starts in ancient Egypt with tourists overlooking some ancient attractions. Now on a side note, I love how the four horsemen are on display at the entrance at the structure. But anyway, while we were there, we saw an ordinary family asking another individual if she minded taking a family picture for them. So as the family was getting set up, the woman that was supposed to be taking the photo froze in horror. Because behind the family, something out of the ordinary was taking place. Because the once passive structure that was used to attract tourists erupted with a burst of blue light. Now centuries ago, Apocalypse built this structure to test Earth's greatest warriors, as he believed that the Earth had grown extremely soft without his hands to guide them. So as Apocalypse's plans start to fall into place, we jump over to Apocalypse's trial room, where we see Mirage and Rick arriving to participate in Apocalypse's challenge. Now according to them, they have no idea where they were teleported to, and despite Mirage's psi powers, she senses no one nearby. But one thing they do understand is if Apocalypse wants to judge them to see if they are worthy to shepherd Earth, then he'll test them on Earth and not Arako. So as they continued to navigate through the temple, a trap door opened up and caused them to drop into a sand pit. A sand pit that threatens to swallow them whole. So as panic surrounds Mirage, she urges Rick to use his ability to get them out of this situation. Now with the request made, Rick closed his eyes and focused on the task at hand. And just like that, Rick dug deep and said, Apocalypse came back for him, even after he fought against him on Arako during issue 35 of X-Men. And after he failed to show up to aid Apocalypse's ritual over the elements in issue 17 of X-Men Red. Now for those who don't know, during the Krakoan era, Apocalypse trained Rick in the use of mutant magic and also how to properly harness his powers. Now following the display of power, we see Mirage states that Rick seemed different while in the temple, and she was convinced that he believed in Apocalypse's plan. So following that observation, the two set off to continue their journey because there is a lot of trials standing between them and the trophy. And speaking of things standing between them and the trophy, we transition over to Gorgon and Penance also taking part in the test. And just like the other two participants, they were put through an array of obstacles. Now during their interaction, we learned that after Gorgon died in Otherworld, he was brought back as a coward. Because similar to Rockslide, when a mutant died in Otherworld, there was no telling what version of the mutant would return. But lucky for Gorgon, he managed to die again, and during his death, he was able to pass through Wanda's mutant waiting room and return to himself. And when he got back, he discovered that the nation he died to defend had been undermined by power-mad fools. So with Gorgon pissed off at the management of Krakoa, we then jump over to one of the fools that caused everything to fall apart, and that was Sinister. And just like always, he is up to his old tricks. Because after all, cloning himself is once again somewhat arduous work rather than a matter of daily routine. So with a flip of a switch, Sinister was able to vaporize a creature before it could reach him. So with Sinister doing what he does best, we jump over to Cable blasting his way through mummies. As Armageddon Girl tells Cable she doesn't heed his help because she is connected to every living being and every element of nature on this planet. So she believes she could stand up to Gaia herself for the right to guide its future. So from her point of view, she is the only person suitable to hold Earth accountable. So following those two, on the next page, we see Exodus just casually walking through the obstacles like they are nothing, because according to him, all these traps are beneath him. So with Exodus powering his way through Apocalypse's test, we then see Wolverine, Forge, Cypher, and Emma trapped in a maze, and according to Wolverine, the stone within the maze is blocking her sense of smell. So with the team forced to use the old way of navigating, Wolverine suggested Emma to exit her diamond form in order to test her psychic range, but Emma quickly shot that down, because according to her, that is her only physical protection while in Apocalypse's death trap. 
Now with that said, we learned that a little while ago, Sink, Magic, and Wolverine were invited to partake in Apocalypse's test to see if any of them could replace him. But before he could offer it, Sink turns it down alongside Magic. Because according to Magic, she just gave up the throne to Limbo, so she is currently not on the market for any new seats of power. But just because two of them didn't want any part in this, didn't mean Wolverine was going to turn it down too. Now skipping back to the current day, we see Cypher take the lead, because he believed that he was beginning to understand the language of the maze. But he was dead wrong, because just as he said that, he stepped on a trigger that caused the wall to fall down. But before it could hit him, Wolverine came to the rescue and saved him. Now as the two laid on the floor, Wolverine asked Cypher why he was even there to begin with, to which Cypher responded by saying he has no idea why, because he was just as surprised that Apocalypse invited him as she was. So with several X-Men members finding themselves together, we transition over to Araco with Angel and Sunfire meeting up to have a conversation. And apparently Angel believes that Shiro called him all the way to Araco to meet with him. But he was mistaken, because Shiro didn't request this meeting. But rather Apocalypse did, so with Apocalypse making himself known, he states that he appreciates him traveling so far to hear him out. Because out of all of his many horsemen, Apocalypse always saw both of them as most likely to ascend to be greater than a mere servants at his side. Because he believed, each of them suffered for him, and in the end, they emerged stronger and tempered by the flame of revelation. And now it falls to Apocalypse to once again push them even further still to determine who might succeed him in his great work on Earth. Now this right here, pissed off Angel, because he immediately shifted into his Archangel form and stated, he went through hell at Apocalypse's hands. And for the good of mutant kind, he put aside his pain and watched him take a seat on the Quiet Council, because he trusted Professor X and Magneto when they said he earned it. But the idea of becoming Apocalypse or seeing someone else become Apocalypse is something he could absolutely not allow to happen. Because one Apocalypse is already more than enough for anyone to survive. So with that out there, Apocalypse's responds by saying he could have met him anywhere on Earth, but I chose to invite him here, so that he might see what compels him. Because when Earth was young, he watched his homeland cleaved in two. And for centuries, during that time Araco suffered. But for centuries, Araco endured. Now Apocalypse did all that he could to prepare the mutants left behind to one day rejoin his family. To one day, make his kind strong enough to rise to the challenge set upon them by the nature of their birth. Now he thought he achieved that goal when Krakoa and Arako were made whole once more. But then Krakoa fell and Arako endured, and so long as he watches over it, he will see that Arako is prepared for the day when all of their people are united once more. But as he guides Arako, so too must someone hold Earth to its highest potential. So Apocalypse offered his steady hand, but in the end, he was rejected. So all Apocalypse wanted to see was if one of his favorite horsemen would answer his call. So with that offer on the table, Sunfire responded by saying once, the mere sight of Apocalypse would have repulsed him and driven shame and fear deep into his bones. But now his journeys across Krakoa, Araco, and Otherworld have brought him a new sense of purpose. And so, he does not feel that he has found his limits yet and this is not where his path leads. So with Sunfire turning him down, Apocalypse simply states that he will not force him to bend towards his path if he doesn't want to. But see, Angel's response was way more harsh than Shiro's, because he said, Don't lie, Apocalypse never hesitated to play God with everyone's lives. But Angel would be damned if he allows him to turn another innocent mutant into a monster made in his image. So with that statement, Angel and Shiro took off, leaving Apocalypse on his own. Now with that situation going down on Arako, we jump back to the test just to see Sinister arriving on the scene. Now at first he thought he was the first to make it, but that was quickly shot down when Gorgon and Penance crashed his party. But see they weren't the only people there, for all parties were able to rendezvous at the starting line together. So with everyone in attendance, we got to see little conflicts building up between certain members, like Cypher and Armageddon Girl, and Sinister and Exodus. But before anything could pop off, a voice interrupted them. For a hologram of Apocalypse filled the room and stated, For millennia, he sought the path laid out before them on Krakoa. The promise of something more than fighting our lessers for the right to exist. So his people feasted on a bounty of possibilities while the island thrived for a brief moment, and for a time, it seemed that the new age had dawned. Until it was taken from them. Now they are in lean times again, a famine of hope and potential. So one of them will have to lead the mutants of Earth to prosperity once more. They must work together out of habit, but do not mistake, 
the trial he presented to them can only end with only one of them becoming his heir because only one of them will follow in his footsteps and ensure that the mutants of earth are ready to meet the challenges they will face in the days ahead so whether or not the rest of everyone survives is up to themselves now he then goes on to say the obstacles they have faced to reach this chamber were merely a prelude to what awaits them deeper in the temple because the trials they will face will be of the mind the spirit and before he could say the last one the hologram cut out and a blast hit the temple so as fragments flew everywhere the group of mutants turned to see something or someone across the river hurling fireballs their way so with no time to waste the mutants jumped into action so as the team was rushing off to battle cable caught sinister trying to sneak away now unlike most of the heroes there sinister could care less about the innocent people in danger but see the rest of the team came to the conclusion that this could also be a part of the test apocalypse set out before them so in hopes of solving it fast exodus used his ability to carry everyone to the battle at hand and when we get there we see one of the sons of apocalypse william rolfson aka genocides or better known as holocaust so with that said this first issue of a new era comes to an end now i got to say this issue wasn't that bad the story was solid and this is a logical move for apocalypse because given how he left off in the previous issue it was only right for him to rethink everything and i also got to say that the return of genocide is an amazing addition to this story and i hope the fact that i said both of his sons different names doesn't flag the video because youtube could be really funny about names and topics like that but anyway i also like how we got that interaction between angel and apocalypse because during angel's time as a horseman he was put through the ringer so i can't blame him for how he feels about his once master now on a personal note i'm sorry about not posting as much as i said i would i had a family emergency that had me go out of town for a few days but i'm back and ready to get back to work so with that out there if you want to stay in the loop about any individual storyline then how about you hop over to the playlist section down below or in the link cards above to get all caught up on the x-men runs so with that established i hope you enjoyed this video and please don't forget to leave a like and a comment if you want to see more videos like this thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next review